It's exciting to start working in a new garden location. Assessing your site at the very beginning will help ensure your success. You'll know more about your garden location, including its strengths and weaknesses. All plants need sunlight in order to grow, but different plants prefer different amounts of light. In order to determine what plants will be best in your space, you want to consider how much light you have available. A garden that receives at least six hours of sunlight a day is considered to be in full sun. Many plants do well in full sun, and if you're interested in growing vegetables or other plants for food, you will want to make sure that your garden is located in a bright and sunny place. Areas that are in partial sun get sun at some parts of the day, but not the many hours of sun that many plants require. Overhead trees can create filtered light or dappled shade where sunlight is able to pass through a thin canopy. Shaded areas can also grow amazing plants. It's just a matter of selecting plants that are suited to that amount of light that is available. Most places that have a cold climate have seasonal variations in daylight. The farther you live from the equator, the more variation you'll have in your daylight. This means that the days are long in the summer and the sun travels a path that's very high overhead in the sky. However, during the winter, the sun is very low in the sky and shines for a much shorter amount of time. Through the course of the growing season, your light conditions may change because the path of the sun changes. This is just something to be aware of. If you require full sun to grow vegetables, fruits, or other sun-loving plants, you will want to make sure that you get at least six hours of sun during the entire growing season. You will also want to consider the orientation of your garden to the sun, particularly if you're on a slope. Aspect is the direction that a slope faces, and having an aspect that points towards the sun will increase the sun exposure in your garden. The side of a slope that faces away from the sun doesn't get as much direct sunlight and will tend to have a colder microclimate. Another important consideration is the degree to which your ground slopes. If you're on a hill or a steeper slope, water will have a tendency to drain off the site more quickly. Steep slopes that face the sun can be particularly hot and dry. It's often easiest to garden on a relatively flat piece of ground. However, slopes provide a wealth of opportunities for creative and good-looking garden projects because they can create a lot of visual interest. If you do garden in an area with a more substantial slope, you may want to consider building terraces to help retain water and give yourself a flat area of ground to work with. As you assess a potential garden location, consider how that site is exposed to weather conditions throughout the year. Strong winds can damage plants. Wind can kick up loose soil, which acts like sandpaper against delicate plants. And wind can blow plants over, as well as blow around outdoor furniture or other items you might like to have in your garden. Consider whether your garden space is exposed to strong winds. Wind may affect an entire garden if it is an exposed location, or just parts of it if buildings or other obstructions influence the way wind moves across the landscape. An area with more wind may be better suited for shorter or sturdier plants, or some plants may need some extra staking to help keep them stable. Cold climates can also have additional challenges for gardeners, even outside of the growing season. Where I live, we have long snowy winters, and the snow influences the places where I can garden and what I can grow there. Certain areas need to be maintained as open lawn because snow plows or snow throwers are used to keep these areas clear in the winter. Areas where snow piles, such as this massive pile of snow in front of our house, are unsuitable for woody plants because the weight of the snow or any ice would cause damage. Only non-woody perennial plants that die back to the ground in the fall can be maintained in areas that have piles of snow in the winter. Snow piles and banks may also stick around for a long time in the spring, particularly when they are not in direct sunlight. You may need to consider where snow naturally drifts or where snow is piled during the winter so that you can reduce damage to your plants and make sure you can start working in your garden earlier in the spring. Soils are critically important to gardening, and a later section will cover how to understand your garden soils and how to improve soils for plant growth. Soils are a mix of mineral particles of varying sizes. Soils have three particle sizes, sand, silt, and clay. Sand particles are the biggest of these and can be felt between your fingers, like beach sand. Soils that are primarily sandy have a tendency to drain quickly and can be dry. Beach dune grasses are an extreme example of this. Clays are the smallest particles and are smooth. Soils that are primarily clay can be gummy, like modeling clay, and hold a lot of water. The best gardening soils contain a mix of particle sizes. As you assess your potential garden, you'll want to know whether your area contains a lot of rocks or gravel, as these areas can be harder to work in. Rocky soils can be hard for plant roots to penetrate, and a lot of work is needed to garden in soils that are especially rocky. As you complete your 
your site assessment, look for other characteristics of your soils that might create substantial challenges or impediments to gardening. Compaction can be a problem for many home gardens. Compaction happens when machinery or even foot traffic in this frequent enough. It puts weight on the soil and pushes the soil particles together. This reduces the amount of pore space between soils and makes soils harder. Water does not penetrate the compacted soils as well, and neither do plant roots. Compacted soils can also need a drainage, so that water will be more likely to puddle on top of the compacted soil. Often the areas next to a home or building will be compacted due to building construction. Even areas that do not have compacted soils may have drainage problems. This is most likely to happen in areas that are in low landscape positions, such as a depression or swale, or in an area with a high water table. These areas may remain puddled or saturated for an extended time after a rainfall. Areas that are naturally wet and have poor drainage would not be good areas for many garden plants or for vegetable gardens. However, there are many water-loving plants that could be suited to these areas and form a nice rain garden. Plants also need water to grow, particularly when daytime temperatures are hot. You'll want to have a plan in place to water your plants when conditions are dry. Watering options for plants range from incredibly simple to incredibly complex and sophisticated. If you have a relatively small garden and only occasionally water, watering by hand using a watering can or sprinkler is sufficient. However, as your watering needs increase, you may want to develop a system that is easier for you. This could be as simple as setting out a sprinkler in a garden area, or you can create an entire irrigation system. Consider how close your garden is to the nearest hose, spigot, or water source, as well as how you plan to water when your plants are thirsty. Look around the space and take note of other factors that could create limitations for your garden. A few examples are Existing plants Not only can trees or other plants block the sun and compete with your garden plants for light, but they may also have underground root systems that extend into the area that you want to garden. For many trees, these roots extend out as far or even farther from the base of the tree as the tree leaves to, so you may encounter tree roots in a sunny area relatively far from the tree. Buildings can also create obstructions for plant growth. As you plan what you want to plant, consider its full size when mature, and be sure to give it adequate space for any buildings or permanent structures. Putting a plant too close to a building is not good for the plant and can sometimes damage the building as well. Some areas may be affected by salt used for de-icing walkways and roads in winter. Another aspect of gardening, particularly if you're working in a location that has been gardened or cultivated in the past, is that you may have competitive plants that you need to control. A weed is a plant that's growing where it's not desired. This means that just about any plant can be a weed. However, some weeds are more problematic than others because they're hard to get rid of. Everyday weeds include a variety of plants like dandelions, purslane, lamb's quarters, and hundreds of others. You will need to stay on top of these weeds to keep your garden looking nice. Some plants are especially hard to get rid of once they take hold. Oftentimes these plants are called invasive or aggressive, and they may take extra effort to get rid of. If you know that these plants are present in the area where you plan to garden, be sure to ready yourself to fight these plants so you can truly get rid of them completely. Also be cautious when adding plants to your garden that you don't inadvertently introduce any that are known to cause trouble. Consider how your garden interacts with people. Out of doors, consider the movement of people in the yard or landscape. Locate walkways where people currently travel. If you plan your garden, think about what the garden looks like from indoors. Often gardens are designed to show a particular view or to create the sense of an outdoor room. Lastly, get real and think about what's really doable given your time, expertise, and budget. Doing so at the outset will ensure your best chances of success. As you start gardening, you may need to decide whether you want to use an area that already has gardening or landscaping, or if you should start in an altogether new location. Let's say you just bought this house. Congratulations! This house already has some landscaping around the foundation, and if you wanted to, you could get started gardening in this area very quickly because the area is already free of grass and weeds. That's the main benefit of working in an area that already has a garden. You don't have to do nearly as much site preparation compared to breaking new ground. The downside is that you might inherit some things that are less desirable. For example, you might not like the plants that are there already, and you'll have to rip them out. Even worse, you might have a really weedy, pernicious plant that's going to take a lot of effort to remove. 
Some existing garden spaces are difficult to work in and you'll want to assess your space, but much of the time it's easier to start gardening in an existing space if the area is conducive to your gardening goals. The other option is to create a new garden area. Most of the time this entails converting an area that is currently a lawn into a new garden. The downside is that that requires a fair amount of site preparation to get started. However, by starting fresh, you can have exactly what you want from the very beginning. Besides gardening in the ground, you can do a variety of things by gardening in raised beds or in containers. Because raised beds and containers are not in the ground, they give you greater control over the growing conditions in your garden soils. Being off of the ground means that the soils generally warm up earlier in the spring and it can give you a jump start on the growing season. Being above ground also improves the soil drainage if that's a concern in your particular location. Gardening in containers and raised beds can be a great way to avoid challenging soil conditions whether it's bad drainage or poor or rocky soils. Another big benefit of containers and raised gardens is that they can be adapted to a variety of spaces. Container gardens can be used to fill a small patio or containers can be used to provide some color or punch to a regular garden. The enormous flexibility of these types of gardens creates endless opportunities for creative gardeners. Raised beds on the ground can have several advantages. I've been using raised beds that are just six inches tall in my vegetable gardens for a few years now. They are filled with a combination of regular soil from my yard and some additional fill plus compost and soil amendments to improve the soil. Over the years, I have found that the raised beds do warm up and dry out more quickly in the spring, allowing me to get started in my garden sooner than if I was planting directly into the ground. They also help with weeding because I can focus on weeding a single bed at a time, and it's okay if the walkways get a little bit weedy and overgrown. These beds are three feet wide, which makes it easy to reach into the beds from either side and work in the soil. The beds are eight to 12 feet long. Some of the walkways are only about a foot and a half wide, but the center walkway is a wider to accommodate a wheelbarrow. You don't even have to build raised beds if you don't want to. Just mounding or hilling the soil to a height of a few inches tall can help raise soil temperatures and improve drainage. This is why it's recommended to grow some heat-loving plants like cucumbers and melons in hilled soil. Containers and planters also provide endless options for gardeners. Garden soil is too dense and heavy for containers, so a potting mixture is used instead. Because containers are relatively small and drain quickly, they need to be watered more frequently than in-ground gardens. Hanging baskets dry out particularly quickly and can need watering twice a day in warm weather. Because frequent watering is necessary, there are some self-watering containers available that can provide water to plants for a longer period. When selecting a planter, try and choose the largest size that is practical for the plant in its location. Larger containers can store more water and won't dry out as easily. A large container also provides more room for plant roots to grow and will reduce the need for you to repot it every time it gets bigger.